Hey, man, we're, we're excited. We're, we're so thankful as we're talking about this series this week about um, getting, breaking the barriers, you know, walking in the new season, uh, receiving all that God wants us to have. And I, I just really want you to just to, to, to turn up your expectation to walk in a new season as something God can do for you even um, today. So even today, on this Thursday, just begin to declare and, and expect something new, expect a breakthrough uh, in your life. And so Isaiah 43 again says, do not remember the things that have happened before. Do not think about the things of the past. See, I will do a new thing it, and it, it will begin happening now. Will you not know about it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Come on, God wants to make a road. God wants to to carve out a path. He wants to make a way of victory for you. And so the last couple of days, we've been talking about uh, removing uh, three barriers that every believer needs to overcome. Uh, One day, I I think Tuesday, we talked about the emotional barrier. Yesterday, we talked about the uh, intellectual barrier. And then today, we're going to talk about the choice, choice barrier to trust God. And so um, with this situation or with this barrier, is it possible to trust God? I, I, people are going to say, yeah, sure, 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 sure. You know, that's not an issue. But the natural gap, gravity of the flesh pulls, pulls us really away from God, God's grace toward us to living a, a law-based life. This gravity is is like a built-in magnet that draws us toward controlling, creating, and really manipulating our lives and those around us. Let me say that one again. This gravity is like a a built-in magnet that draws us to control, to create, and manipulate our own lives and those of those around us. And have you ever wondered why we get caught up in the same sins over and over In addition to natural gravity, Satan uses the same methods repeatedly, and they work much of the time. And the three tools Satan used to keep us ineffective on the choice level are, one, the flesh. So the Bible says you got to crucify your flesh. Matter of fact, Paul says it in 1 Corinthians 7, he calls it an it. Your flesh is an it. Referring to the earthly nature of man apart from the divine influence, therefore you are prone to sin and opposed to God. So we got to make sure we're not, we're not catering to the flesh. He talks about that in Romans chapter 8. We got to keep our flesh under, all right? And then it says the world, referring here to the organized system of temporal values that are opposed to the, to the life of Christ and the believer. Paul says it again. As a matter of fact, John says, don't love the world. Don't love the things in the world. If you love the world, it says the love of God is not in you. Isn't that a deep scripture? So we got to watch out for the flesh. We got to watch out for uh, walking in worldly concepts or worldly ideas so we can break the choice barrier. And then, of course, the enemy himself. Uh, Satan's three desires for us are to behave as if we don't really matter, as if we're lost. We're not lost to think is that we're blind. We're not blind. We can see. And that's why it's so important to pray that your eyes are open, your eyes of understanding are enlightened. And, 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 and we're definitely not captive. He wants you to think that you're captive, that, that, that you have no way out, that all is lost. No, no, all is not lost. No, God is the God of the breakthrough. God is the God of the second chance. God is the God who comes and opens doors that, that have been closed. He closes doors that have been opened. God will help you. He will meet you right where you are to make that breakthrough in your life. But you got to make the choice. You got to make the choice to do it God's way. And so Matthew chapter 26 says, he went on a little the father, talking about Jesus right before Um, right before the crucifixion, with his face to the ground praying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. But he says this, he says, he says, yet I want your will to be done, not mine. The King James says, your will be done, may the, the, the will of the Lord be done, not my will, but your will be done. So the real barrier is our knowledge or our thinking or our lack of knowledge. We got to make sure we're getting the right information. Again, Romans 12 says, don't copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. 
Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing uh, and perfect. And and so I really want to take a moment. I know this may be a little bit longer than some of the other ones, but I really want to have us really understand the importance of having a biblical world view, you know, based on Romans, you know, chapter 12. Because a lot of times we've been sitting in churches and we're hearing God's word, but we our worldview and how we perceive life and how we're making choices and how we're making decisions is really, when it's all said and done, may not truly be based on the Bible. It may be based on how we were raised or, or based on some decisions and choices that we've made up on our own. And so Romans 12 really helps us to understand what it really means to, to start to have a biblical world view. So Paul, number one, Paul urges believers to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. To present is a technical term which is used to describe the offering of an animal. We know that from the Old Testament for sacrifice on the altar. It means to offer once and for all and has the idea of relinquishing one's grip. So we got to present our bodies to God. We got to present ourselves to God. Number two, the word conform is where we get the word scheme, scheme from. It sometimes is translated as fashion. Paul is urging us to stop being pushed into the fashion of the world. The word world we talked about yesterday is really the world system or popular culture, which is in rebellion to God. We are bombarded with, bombarded, excuse me, with unbiblical worldviews through entertainment, Celebrity influencers, music, social media, the Internet, the news, politics, education, all designed to seductively draw us in. Number three, the, the command to be transformed by the renewal of your mind, which refers to an inner change, a metamorphosis, as it were, is not something we can do on our own. It refers to a deep inner change. You want God to do a deep work in you, a total change from the inside out. At its core, it involves a change of life or change in form. And the last one is simple this, the need to adjust our will to God's will. God bless you guys. Love you all. Let's get that biblical worldview and start thinking God's thoughts. Let's start doing things God's way. And I believe your life is going to be blessed because the barriers will be out of the way. Enjoy your Thursday.